Hello besties, beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. Today is sewing with Tyke. I'm excited to have you here today. So today we'll be learning how to cut and sew this beautiful chiffon cape gown. Now to all returning subscribers, thank you so so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you all. And if today is your first time of joining us, oh, you are welcome. You will love it here. Kindly subscribe, put on the notification bell to get notified anytime I drop a new video. Please help my channel to go. And if this is not your first time of joining us, but you are yet to subscribe, please do so today. Okay? Thank you. So let's get started. So I folded the fabric into two to accommodate the largest measurement we are working with today, which is the hip measurement. Now it's time to put in the full length measurement of the gown that we're working with today which is 40 plus 2 inches allowance at the end but the first thing i'll be doing is to come down by one inch from the tip of the fabric which is otherwise known as the selvage area so this from this one inch now that will be my start point so i won't be starting my measurement from the tip of the ankara so from there i will measure out 40 plus 2 for the m allowance that's 42 it's time to put in the vertical measurement. So the first vertical measurement that I'll be putting down here is the arm O line. And to get that, I usually divide the bust by 6 plus 1.5 plus 1. And the bust that we're working with today is 35. 35 divided by 6 plus 1.5 is 7.3 plus 1 is 8.3. But I'll be using 8 inch because it's a sleeveless gown. So I'll be putting 8. Now the next vertical measurement is the half length. That's the neck to waist which is 16 and then to the hip which is 25 so i'll go ahead and measure all of that and connect it connect it so here is my start point here is the arm hole line 8 instead of 8.3 because it is sleeveless here is the half length 16 here is the hip line next to hip 25 here is the length of the gown 40 and here is 2 inches allowance so i'll go ahead and start putting the horizontal measurements now the first horizontal measurement i'll be putting down is the shoulder the shoulder measurement that we're working with is 15 which is 7.5 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. I'll go ahead and put it here on the armhole line also and draw a straight line like this. And draw a straight line this way. Then I'll go ahead and put the measurement on the armhole line, the bust measurement on the armhole line also. The bust measurement is 35. 35 divided by 4, that is 8.75. I'll go ahead and put it here. Then the next thing now, then I'll add the 2 inches so it allowance to it like this. The next thing to do is to put in the waist measurement. The waist measurement we are working with is 30. 30. That is 7 and a half. I'll go ahead and add 2 inches sewing allowance. The next thing to put there now is the hip measurement. And the hip measurement we are working with is 40. That is 10. It's 39 rather. That's 9.75. And plus 2 inches that we have there. So since it's a straight gown, I'll just go ahead and Put the same measurement here. So we have approximately 12. I'll go ahead and put it on the end line also. It is a straight gown, it's not a pencil gown. If, if yours will be pencil, then you go ahead and subtract two inches from your hip measurements and you put that down at the end line. So I'll just go ahead and connect it this way. Now that we are done connecting, the next thing now is to plug the arm hole. I'll come up by two inch. For the front arm hole, I'll come up by two inch, and I'll come down by one inch here from the start point. I'll go in by half inch, then I will connect it like this. I'll connect it like this and and just connect it. So this is how to draft the front arm hole. But I will also be drafting the back arm hole here. To so make cutting of the back easy, I'll drop the back arm here. So I'll just place this on another fabric, cut it out, then I'll shape out the original front arm hole. So to plot the back arm hole, I'll be coming down by half inch. Whatever I have left, 7.5 divided by 2, that's like 3.8. Then I'll connect it like this. So here is the arm hole for the front, and here's the arm hole for the back. The length that we are working with is three and a half in width by four for the front. It's a round neck. Well, I will use three and a half by two for the back. Like I said, I want to use this front to cut out the back. So I'll be cutting out the back 
neckline first. When I'm done using it to cut the back, then I will now cut out the front neckline. So before I cut it out, I'll go ahead to add half inch allowance to the shoulder for joining. So I'll connect the shoulder slant this way for the back, and this is the shoulder slant for the front. So I'll go ahead and add half inch for joining it. That's the reason why I left one inch and did not start from the salvage area of the fabric. Now it's time to cut it out. So I'm cutting out the back neckline, the back shoulder slant, and the back arm hole, like I said I would. So once I'm done using this front pattern now to cut out the back, then I'll come back to this front pattern to cut out the original front neckline, shoulder slant, and front arm hole. So now it's time to cut the back. So what I've done is to add 2 inches straight that way for the zipper allowance for the zipper allowance so the only alteration that we'll be doing here is going to happen at the waistline and that is to prevent the zip from bulging so what you want to do is to extend the waistline to the back pattern then from the center back that is from the place where you have your zipper allowance just mark out half inch mark out half an inch and connect it like i'm doing now then once you are done with that you would want to replace that half inch back to the other side so as not to have shortage in your measurement so you replace the half inches to the side and you connect it also and now it's time to cut it's time to cut out the back pattern Now that we are done cutting the back pattern, it's time to recut the front arm hole, the front neckline, and also the front shoulder slant. I'll be doing all of that now. So the next thing to do now is to use this to cut out the lining, which I'll be doing now. So I've gone ahead to cut out the lining. So the next thing to do now is to cut out the cape. Is to cut out the cape. And to do that, we have to determine the radius because the cape was cut out in a flare form. And to determine the radius, we have to get the neck circumference. So to get the next neck circumference, I'll go ahead and measure what I have on the neck. So you do not need to join the join it at the shoulders first to determine the neck circumference since there's gathers around the neck. So you can actually have it in SS. It is fine so I'll go ahead and measure it the front I have 6.5 on fold and that is 13 and for the back I have 5 after the zipper allowance which is 10 so 13 plus 10 is 23 I'll be adding 2 inch to it since there's gathers that will be 25 now to get the radius for the flare that will be 25 divided by 6.28 I have 3.9 approximately 4 so the radius of the flare that we use to cut out the cape that will be joined to the neck is 4 inches. So I have 2 yards of chiffon fabric here and I've gone ahead to fold it into 4. So from that center, I'll go ahead and measure the radius that we calculated earlier to be 4 inch. I'll measure it all the way. Once I'm done, from that 4 inch mark that I me measured, I'll go ahead to put in the length of the cape. So the length of the cape that we're working with today is 23, which is 2 inches above the neck to hip measurement. Remember when we are cutting out the gown, the neck to hip measurement that we used was 25. So 2 inches above that is 23. And I'll be adding 1 inch allowance to it so I'll go ahead and measure out 24 and cut it out now this is what I have so I will go ahead and divide it into two that way I'll cut you now I'll just go ahead to cut out long stripe of seven inches in width for that pleated design at the front of the gown so I'll go ahead and do that now then we'll go ahead to the sewing machine so the first thing we'll be making is that plated design at the front. So this is that long stripe of 7 inches that I cut earlier. I'm going to have to fold it into two, then turn it over and iron it that way. And I make sure that the joining is at the center. And this is a long stripe of Ankara. So I added an interfacing to it, paper stay, to make it firm. And I folded it at the side, so I have 1 inch left. So now I'll go ahead and start with the chiffon first. So I also used an iron to make the center line visible. So you can either do this or chalk it out. Just, just so you would know where the center of the dress is. So that the pleated design can align properly. So I'll go ahead and notch the center that way. Then I'll start plating.
Now that we are done with the pleats, it's time to add the Ankara on it. It's time to sew it on it. Same way, I will notch the center that way. Then I will just sew it at the cl very close to the edge. I'll go ahead and sew it on both sides. Now that the front design is ready, the next thing to do is just to flip it over and just trim off the excess at the neck area like this. Now the next thing to do now is to join it at the shoulders, to join the ankara at the shoulders. I won't be adding the lining yet because we want the chiffon, at the chiffon to be in between the lining and the ankara at the neck area to have a neat look. So I'll just go ahead and join the shoulders with half an inch. And now it's time to attach the cape from the center back, not from the zipper allowance, from the center back all the way to that front design on both sides. So starting after the zipper allowance, I will attach the cape that way, making sure that I form the pleat as I sew along the neckline. So I'll do that. Now that the cape has been fixed, the next thing to do now is to join the lining at the shoulders also. After which you would match up the lining with the ankara this way and sew it all along the neckline. Making sure that the shoulder of the ankara matches up with the shoulder line at the lining. Then sew it all the way over the neckline like that. This will help to achieve a neat finish. So you would see by the time we are done. And now it's time to notch it that way and top stitch it on the lining so as to make the so as to make the sewing lay flat properly, so as to make the lining lay flat and not pop out underneath the dress. After sewing the chiffon in between the lining and the ankara at the neck, the next thing to do now is just to sew the lining to the sides and to the end. So this, I've been able to achieve this neat look at the end and at the sides. I've done that for the front and one part for the back. You can see what I have. So I'll show you how I came about this. So what you want to do is, so this is the second side of the front that I'm yet to sew. So this is what you would have after turning the chiffon in between the lining this way. So this is what you would have. So what you want to do is to make sure that the length of your lining is shorter than that, that, than that of the Ankara. It depends on the, it depends on how many inches you added to the Ankara earlier and it depends on how many inches you want it to come up by. So me, I reduced mine by 1.5 inch. I reduced mine by 1.5 inch. Remember, I added 2 inches to the length of the gown. I reduced mine by 1.5 inch. So what you want to do is make sure that you know that this is the right side of the this is the right side of the lining now, and this is the right side of the ankara. So you make sure that the right side faces each other, which means you turn it this way. I've turned it this way. The right sides now face each other. Here is the wrong side, and here is the wrong side. So you go ahead and sew it at the end like this by half of an inch go ahead and sew it at the end this way by the time you are done sewing it you then you will go ahead and then you go ahead and sew the sides as well you go ahead and sew the sides as well by the time you get here you have something like this so you so here it is right side facing each other i will sew it by half an inch on the wrong side at the end first at the end first so now i'll start sewing it at the sides after which i'll turn it over so you can see and that's what i have i'll go ahead and iron it out now then plot out the dart line and i'll show you plot the dart for the front you'll be using the bust pan measurement the bust pan measurement for the person we are working with is 3.5 so here is 7 the start point of the dart would be one inch below the bust point and it will end one inch above the hip above the hip so that's what i've done here so from the waistline, come in by half inch and connect it to the apex of the dart that way and to the lower part of the dart also. So for the back, remember to, to factor it the zipper allowance. And now it's time to join the two back pieces together, leaving space for the zipper and also stopping 7 inches above the hem line, giving room for the back vent. So now I've gone ahead to fix the zipper. It's time to join it at the sides by putting in the bust measurement, the waist measurement, and the hip measurement. So I'll go ahead and join it at the sides now, then show you how I finished up the arm O. I'm going to join it at the sides. I'm putting in the bust measurement, the waist, and the hip measurement. And I'm going to add to finish up the arm O also. So this is how I finished up the arm O. I just went ahead to fold it in this way. 
and I sold it all the way. So you can do this, or you can finish it off with the buyers, or you can sew it inside out. But if you want to sew it inside out, you must have done that while joining the sides and after fixing the end. So you must have done that. So and we have come to the end of today's tutorial. That will be all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it detailed enough. I hope you found this helpful. Kindly give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know when you'll be trying yours out. Share this video with as many people as possible. If you are yet to subscribe now is the time to please subscribe. Put on the notification bell of my channel to go. And you can also connect with me on my Instagram page at taik underscore taikito. So till I come your way in my next video. Bye.